Previously, we looked at notation when we want to combine two or more events, and we also looked at the Venn diagram representation of the combination of events. So in this lecture, we are going to look at the rules of probability that will help us to assign probability to events and the combination of events. Now, the first rule is the boundaries of probability. And it states that for any event A, the probability of, an, of the event must lie between 0 and 1 inclusive. That just means that we cannot get a probability that is negative and we can never get a probability for an event that exceeds 1. Now if we revisit a previous example where our sample space S was from 0 to 9, and we defined the three events A, B, and C, where A was a random digit that is uneven, B was a digit less than 6, and C was an uneven digit smaller than 6. Now we want to know what is the probability of A or B, A union B. So remembering that we use the notation A union B to indicate either A, or B, or both. So if we look at the Venn diagram representation, then A union B will be this area. And to find the probability of A union B, we can count the number of simple events, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 out of 10. Using the classical definition of probability, we can get the probability of A union B is 8 out of 10. Okay, so can we get this probability by just adding the probability of A and the probability of B? So if we take the probability of A and we add to that the probability of B. The probability of A is 5 over 10. The probability of B is 6 over 10. And then we get 11 over 10. Now this exceeds 1 and that definitely means warning signs. We cannot get a probability that exceeds 1. Okay, so the reason for that is that when we add the probability of A and the probability of B, if we look here at the um, Venn diagram, we take the probability of B and we add the probability of A, we are, in fact, counting the probability of the in intersection twice. So that then brings us to the addition rule. The addition rule states that the probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection. And we subtract the probability of the intersection once because we have added it twice. Now, if events A and B are mutually exclusive, then the addition rule simplifies to just the probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. And that is, of course, when A and B are mutually exclusive, then the A intersecting B is the impossible event. So the probability of A intersecting B is the probability of the impossible event and that probability is just zero. We can extend the ad addition rule, of course, to more than only two events. So back to our example, if we want to get the probability of A union B, that is the probability of A plus the probability of B, now using the addition rule, minus the probability of A intersecting B. Probability of A is 5 over 10, the probability of B, 6 over 10, and the probability of A intersecting B, 1, 2, 3 over 10. So we subtract 3 over 10, and that gives us 8 over 10. The next rule is the complement rule. The complement rule states that the probability of A complement is 1 minus the probability of A. So 
In our example, if we want to get the probability of a complement, that is 1 minus the probability of a, so that's 1 minus 5 over 10, which is 0 0.5. And the same is true for probability of b complement, that's 1 minus the probability of b. We know that the probability of b is 6 over 10, so the probability of b complement must be 0 0.4. Remember, b complement means it's everything except event b. Now consider the following. If I know that a digit smaller than 6 was generated, what is the probability that an uneven digit was generated? So I know that event B took place. I've got some extra information that a digit smaller than 6 was generated. So I know event B took place. Now I want to know what is the probability that an uneven digit was generated. So I know that event B took place, so I can actually ignore everything that's not part of event B. So in a sense, I'm decreasing my sample space from S to B. So now I have a sample space with six simple events. And I want to know what is the probability that an uneven digit was generated. So there are three uneven digits in this so-called new sample space. So we can say that the probability that an uneven digit was generated if a digit smaller than 6 was generated is 3 over 6. So this is an example of conditional probability. Conditional probability says what is the probability for an event A if I know that another event, event B, took place. And that is equal to the probability of A intersecting B over the probability of B. And of course, the probability of B cannot be zero. And we can also find the probability of B given A, which is the probability of A intersecting B over the probability of A. So back to our example. We want to find the probability of an um, uneven um, digit. So we want to find the probability of A given B, that a digit smaller than 6 was generated. So that is the probability of A intersecting B over the probability of B. Now the probability of A intersecting B is 1, 2, 3 out of 10 divided by the probability of b, which is 6 over 10, and that gives us 3 over 6. Okay, so that was then conditional probability. In the next lecture, we will look at a definition of dependent and independent events.